I want to go over the differences between these two and some critical parts where the differences are. So first, there is the advisory committee, December 17, they said, yes, we recommend this vaccine. So now it is up to the uh, FDA to then go ahead and approve it. Hopefully they will approve it by Friday. So 95% of the participants had said yes. Now let's look at a comparison of these two. So let me see if I can make it a tiny bit bigger. I wanted to compare these two because that is what is the most common question I've been asked. So let's see. How are these two vaccines? So company size, Moderna, US-based company, small company, relatively sp small company compared to other big pharmas. Pfizer, BioNTech. BioNTech is a small company based in Germany to, I think, Turkish uh, husband and wife or a Turkish couple who came up with the basic um, technology of the vaccine and then Pfizer became their platform. So it is a small company partnering with a giant. Pfizer is a giant. Then are they do they have products in the market? So Moderna does not have any product in the market so far. They have many RNA-based vaccines, but none of their vaccine has become uh, approved or has gone out even to phase three. This is their first vaccine that has gone through the phase three. And today you're seeing that it is recommended for approval as well. I think by Friday they will be approved too. So this is their first product. Of course, Pfizer has many, many products already in the market. So their experience for the products and selling and all that is more. Vaccine type, they both are messenger RNA vaccines. And we just discussed it. So I don't feel that we should discuss it once more. Preservatives in the vaccine, both of them have no preservatives, which is a good thing. Adjuvants that we become very upset about that adjuvants can cause issues or antibiotics, both have no. I'm not sure about the antibiotics in the Pfizer part. I could not find it, but I'm sure that they would, I think they would not have antibiotics either because their vaccine's lifetime is very short too. Now, do they change DNA? <laughs> So no on both parts. Which antigen for the virus do they make? They both make spike protein for the virus. So, and that is a protein that is needed. Now check this out, allergic reactions. So far from Moderna, no allergic reaction has been observed. However, on the Pfizer side, some allergic reactions have, seen, have been seen. And then we know that during the production now, this is called phase four when they have actually starting to produce, uh, use the vaccine outside of the trial. It is actually called phase four, it is still under trial. And so we saw two allergic reactions in UK. We saw one allergic reaction here in Alaska. The UK uh, folks were already uh, hyperallergic and they used to carry EpiPens or those things. Although the person in Alaska, she did not have any uh, history of allergies. So she did develop the allerg uh, allergic reaction or anaphylaxis type reaction. They immediately gave her epinephrine. Uh, she became fine, but then it re-emerged and then they had to keep her overnight and continue to give her epinephrine. And then by the morning she was okay. And this is a very common behavior of the anaphylaxis that when the mast cells start degranulating, there are two phases of degranulation. There is an immediate phase of degranulation, and then they can continue to make more uh, cytokines and then degranulate them at a later time. Plus neutrophils participate in it as well. And eosinophils start participating as well. So there is sometimes more than 24 hours that is passed in the allergic reaction. So here, in my opinion, uh, we'll see when Moderna starts going out in production, for any allergic reactions, but at least Moderna does not have any allergic reactions reported so far. Efficacy, both of them are 94%, so all greater than 94%, so almost same. Storage, this is an important one. Uh, in the case of storage, Pfizer's vaccine needs ultra cold storage, minus 75 degrees centigrade or more. And because of that, even in the US, uh, the, this storage, I think it is minus 70 
degree centigrade I've written here minus 75. Uh, most of the storage facilities in the US are about minus 20 degrees centigrade. So it is minus 50 centigrade more needed. So there are special containers and special storage um, needs. That also means that the chain of supply, the transportation also is a cold chain. So the whole transportation mechanism has to be very cold as well. The um, temperature for Moderna, which is a good thing, minus 20 degrees centigrade. This is the temperature for the freezer section of your uh, at home refrigerators. While um, Pfizer needs minus 70 or more, they also need a cold chain. They also need to keep the dry ice, although they say that it works. But there is an outcome of that, and that is that Pfizer's vaccine cannot be sent out widely because until the facility that is receiving the vaccine has the cold storage facilities or equipment available, they cannot keep it. So because of that, it is difficult to kind of massively send out Pfizer's vaccine, for example, in the rural areas or, or distant remote areas. On the other hand, Moderna vaccine can be sent out to a larger uh, sites. Then life in refrigerator. So let's say you got the vaccine out of the cold storage and now you put that in the refrigerator, in the freezer uh, or refrigerator, Moderna can stay there for 30 days and stay, stay okay. On the other hand, <clears throat> Pfizer's vaccine, once it is outside the cold storage, that ultra cold storage, then in the refrigerator, it can only stay there for five days. Dosage. The Moderna's vaccine has 100 microgram, two, dosage, two doses, and Pfizer's vaccine has 30 microgram, two doses. Efficacy start, that is different. So efficacy start for the Moderna is 14 days after the second dose. And it is given 20 days. The doses are separated by 28 days, so almost a month. So that means about 44 days or 43 days after the two after the first dose is when you should start expecting yourself to be uh, protected. So before that, you have a chance of getting COVID. You have to keep all the norms of social distancing, hand washing, mask, and other protections. On the other hand, the um, interval for the Pfizer is 21 days. And I think that they say their efficacy can start seven days after the sec second dose, but I use 14 days after the second dose as well. So they become, they start protecting you from day 35 or earlier. So that is where Pfizer's vaccine is a little bit better that it starts protecting you earlier. But we have spent about a year now with this virus. So I think 10 days is not something that should break the deal. In terms of age, Moderna's vaccine is tested on 18 and above. So it cannot be used for under 18. And it is not approved for that either. On the other hand, Pfizer's vaccine we know has been tested 12 years and above. And that, that number is smaller, but it is approved for 16 years and above. So that is a difference. Now, how many dose, doses US has? So US has originally had ordered 100 million doses from Moderna. US just upped that to 200 million. And Pfizer, we have purchased 100 million from them. I think there is a potential to purchase another 500 million and there is discussion going on. And um, so that is happening. Within this month of December, between the two vaccine companies, we would have 40 million doses available. That means another 20 million people will become, um, uh, what is that, In, given first dose. So of course they would not fully become protected because they will have to then wait for either 20, uh, 24 days or 35 days because they need to have the second dose and then they have to wait after that. But anyways, within December time frame, 20 million doses or vaccinations can occur. Now, this is important. So if you see here, Moderna, because of its lower, uh, reduced need for temperature, how should I phrase it? 
because of its less strict need for ultra cold temperature. Moderna can actually be rolled out to 3,200 sites in the US. So that includes many rural areas or distant areas or remote areas. On the other hand, so far, Pfizer's vaccine can only go out to 636 sites that are prepared to receive this vaccine. So that is a huge difference, if you see, in their distribution. So I think that this will matter over time. Then the next question is infertility. Somebody had left a comment for, for me on the YouTube. So of course, folks, who are, although I do not feel, um, I do not argue or I do not um, try to say that somebody who does not want to have a vaccine is a problem because that is your decision and that is your doctor's decision and that is your um, community, wherever you are, your hospital or, or workplace. This is not my decision. My job is to provide the information. So somebody had said to me this morning, of course, I got, if you read comments, I got yelled at by a lot of folks. And it is so funny that I have explained something that there is no fetal cell in here. And then right underneath is a comment. So you are now saying that there is fetal cell. So you are now, so <laughs> there was just a weird set of comments there. One of the comment was, that there is a DARPA gel in this thing and why don't you talk about it? And that is going to cause infertility in the women. And number one, the simple answer is no, that will not happen. And a more technical answer is that during the, during the trial, those who received the vaccine, they had tested them that they are not pregnant, but then they became pregnant before the second dose. And so there were six women who became pregnant on the Moderna side, and there were 12 women who became pregnant on the Pfizer side. So if this was is somehow a an infertility uh, causing thing, then this is not what would happen. And if you say, well, this is a lower number, the placebo side also had similar numbers. Seven, I think, on the Moderna side, and I think on the uh, Pfizer side, 11 or 12. So not much difference, this was similar. So there is no infertility, infertility inducing product. And I can talk separately about it. I just wanted to touch upon that here. Then uh, infections. So how many COVID-19 infections did occur? So we know that, that in Moderna, five infections occurred on the vaccinated side and 90 occurred on the placebo side. Now, please remember that Moderna was tested on about 30,000 people, 15,000 in, in each arm, and Pfizer was tested on about 40,000, so 20,000 in each arm. So there is a difference in number as well. Pfizer had eight people infected who were vaccinated, and then 162 got infected who were in the placebo side. Severe COVID, uh, on Moderna, there was vaccinated group. Nobody became severe. 11 became severe in the placebo group. And I believe there was one person who became severe uh, on Pfizer side, and then four were um, severe in the placebo group. Death because of COVID after the vaccination. So no death in both of them. So that is a very important thing to take away, that there were no deaths after the vaccination. So either of the vaccine will help prevent death because of COVID. Then what was the vaccine tested on people who already had the, the COVID-19? So yes, in case of Moderna, 340 people who got the vaccine had already the um, uh, infection as well. And 334 in the placebo. And I couldn't find much data here. I think I didn't look correctly. But there was one person who was already infected with SARS-CoV-2 and got vaccine on Pfizer side and one on the Pfizer's placebo side. I think this data is incorrect. I, I just could not find it correctly. And then does the vaccine stop transmission? Both of them say we do not know yet. Does the vaccine stop long hauling symptoms? Both of them say we do not know yet. Do these vaccines cause long hauling symptoms? They both say that the long term efficacy or side effects are not known because it is a vaccine that is just given. So we only have 
two months worth of data. So this is the discussion for today. I wanted to uh, share the news. Plus, I wanted to discuss the difference between these two. So now my question to you is, if in your area both vaccines are present, which I doubt, I think that they would supply various areas with one kind of vaccine. Unless an area needs a larger number of vaccines and let's say Pfizer cannot supply enough numbers and they bring in Moderna as well. So what do you think? If you look at this data, which vaccine will you go for? And uh, this is also, from my point of view, this is also the response to someone who had uh, put a comment yesterday.